Let's explore some time offsetting and instances. We're going to keep things simple for this one, and then we'll take a look how to use morphs and MDDs in the next couple of parts. This is the first example we're going to take a look at. Let's just turn off the instances. And what I have is two links in this arm, as I'm calling it. I've got a left side and a right side. All I'm doing is animating the scale position and rotation values on the right hand side chain. And on the left hand side, I'm using the same as item point to that right hand side, but with a multiplication of minus one on the X and the heading. So the left hand side is basically mirroring what's happening on the right. Now for this to work, we need to group these under a parent item. We'll select both sides of the arm as I'm calling them. Control shift and we'll look for light wave create group. Let's just call it links. We're going to build up along a spline. Let's create the spline now. Let's create a new null. Let's just call it node. Let's select that. Items, array. We'll have three of those, 10 meters apart. Oh, it's almost like I've set it up before. And then we're going to go to group clones on null. Okay, that. that's fine. A couple of things to point out is that firstly, I'm on frame 16, which is no good. Let's select all those. Create a key on frame zero and delete what I have here. Let's move to frame zero. Let's rename this spline so we know what we're talking about. Now we need to make this an active spline, which is a little bit annoying this, this step, but we need to create a new null. Let's call it viz. Okay, press M, spline control, and we'll point it to the spline. Okay, and there you go. Make sure under D, D for preferences, GL, make sure you're selected accordingly. Okay. Now let's just put a little bit of a bend just to give it a bit of form. Okay. Obviously we can change all of this later. So that'll do for now. Let's get the instances on this spline. Let's select spline, press P for properties. Go to the instance tab and add instance generator where it says add object. We want to add the links. We want to add the parent of those two. And we also want to tick this little hierarchy tick box here. Let's take a look at them in full view. Okay, so the type we want is a spline. Let's go to distribute them. Now we're on frame zero because we won't see anything because they are currently at zero scale. So let's move out the timeline. But the one instance, which is the spline and one which is the source object, we'll hide these two now to save confusion. Hidden and we have to turn them off from the render as well. Okay, so back in the instance generator, instances. Let's put up quite a lot, but we'll also take the scale down. We now have 22 instances of these chains building up. That's got us exactly where we want to, but we want to stagger this animation along the spline. Now what we could do is we could use the time offset value here and we could go to procedural texture. Let's just use the turbulence and we could give it a minus number down here. That means it follows after the main animation. Now the nice thing about this is obviously you can play with the texture until you come up with some random values that suits you. But what if we want to start at this end and work all the way to the end? We're going to have to go nodal for that. So let's close all this down and take it off. Shift. Going nodal here isn't as bad as it sounds. So we will click on the node tab and activate edit nodes. When these instances are created, they're created in a nice orderly fashion. So this is the first one and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah. Although it might be from zero, zero, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So knowing that we're going to use the ID index. And all we're going to do is get a multiply node and we're going to get a scalar. I'm going to use this scalar instead of using this input here because in playback, the multiply node doesn't seem to want to update properly for whatever reason. Whereas the scalar doesn't have that issue. Okay, so with scalar on zero, let's plug that into the multiply node and then the result into the time offset. So nothing should happen at the moment because this is zero offset. But if we put in a little minus number, Let's go minus 0.2. You can see them crawling up the spline. So you might want it super quick. Or you might want it super slow. 
Let's take this a step further with the scaling. Now I want it to get shorter towards the end. Let's move those out of the way. Let's get a gradient and a make vector. We're going to take advantage of the fixed float option here, which means it doesn't matter how many instances are in here. This is always going to be zero. And at the end, it's always going to be one. So we're going to take fixed float into the gradient and I'm going to use the stretch. So we're going to put that into the stretch, but we need to first make sure in the instance generator that the stretch is set to uniform. We'll also note that the stretch start point is at 0%. So under make vector 0, 0, 0, which means it has no effect. We use the alpha. We want to affect the X and the Y. Just double click, double click on that. Now you notice them got bigger because we want zero in there. So zero refers to this instance. One will refer to this end. So let's a keyframe at that end and let's put in something smaller. So as you can see, we're keeping the length, but the widths are shrinking down. I mean, obviously you could size the whole lot by just plugging that in there, but that's not what we want for here. And we can further vary this up. If we go to the rotation tab and go to random, let's go what, minus 45 to 45, something like that, whatever you like. We could also add variety here using the random scale. We're gonna build on this technique, but we're gonna use another example. We're going to use this ray gun as an example to chuck in a few more features. All I'm doing here, as in the previous example, is animating scale, position and rotations. The only thing to note is they all start at zero scale, which means they're not calculated right at the beginning and then pop into life. Now, at this point, I want to make a huge shout out to Shift Keys Plus, which is Ernest Chan's plugin. And if you deal with a lot of keyframes, this thing is invaluable. This is just perfect for nudging stuff about and staggering and offsetting and just generally keeping you sane when all these keyframes are going on. You'll see it's worth in later examples. We'll begin by turning off all of these from the preview. Hidden. Okay, and let's create a new null and call it instances. P for properties, instances, instance generator, double click on that. So as before, add object, we're gonna choose the gun. A nice feature request would be to have the uh, the color of uh, these along here. So if I were to color the gun red, for instance, it would it would be easier to pick out. However, let's select the gun, click on the hierarchy button. So we have one instance there on the item pivot. Let's turn that into a rectangular array. Let's give a little bit more space. Perhaps we'll vary the uh, sizes up a little bit. What we'll also do for this, let's add a new null and let's call it target. So over, over in the instance generator, under the rotation tab, under mode, target items, target item, we'll point that to our new target null. That will give them a little bit of purpose. We could probably animate that target as well as it's building up. Cool, okay, that's a good start. So now let's add in that time offset just to vary things up a little bit. No nodes this time, we're just gonna deal with textures. So let's go to the time offset. Let's use the good old turbulence texture. And as before, let's put a little minus number in here. So I've had a play around with the textures setting and this is quite a good one. I'm quite liking this sort of setup here. It's hard to tell what the texture's doing without any sort of preview, which is a feature request in itself. You notice there's a little bit of a jump at one point. Now, if we take a look at the scene editor, I have some secondary animation on this gun null, which is currently being ignored by the instance generator. So I need to include that motion in all of this. And I do that by changing the local coordinates to world coordinates. And by doing that, it will now take the animation that I've also included on the root of that gun. So everything is running nice and randomly, but let's add another layer of randomness on top of that. And we can do that with the time scale. So if we were to put 200 in here, we will notice it plays the whole animation through at twice the speed. If we were to lower that number, it would be half the speed. So we can use that to our advantage by using a texture. So similar to before, let's pick a texture. Let's try another texture and play with the settings to see what we get. So this is what I've come up with this. It's got a nice randomness to it. Some are running slightly faster, some are running slightly slower. 
I don't want it so random at the point where the trigger is pulled. So I want to reduce the offsets there. So I'm just going to key the time offset and scale at the relevant point. So I think I'm a little bit late with those keys. So let's bring up the graph editor, pan down here, double click on that, drag that in there. There we go, so just a little bit of variation. Now you may get to a point where you want to separate out one of these elements and treat differently from the rest, but still keep the structure. So how do we go about that? Well, I'm going to take the beam in this case, and we want to add a little bit of wiggle to that while it's firing. Create a new null and call it beam. Now the beam is parented to this end here. So let's select that end, go to the setup tab, store selected. Now we will go to the beam, select the beam null, and under assign, we will go same as position, same as rotation, same as scale. We'll go to frame zero and with parent in place on, we will make the ray gun beam a child of the beam null. Now there's a little bit of a bug where it doesn't show up. So the only way around this is to save the scene and revert to last saved. Let's quickly just tidy up this scale issue. Okay, so boom. Select the instances null, select the instance generator, copy it, Let's add another instance generator and paste into. Let's rename that, set description to beam. Double click on this. Go to edit, replace object, and we're gonna replace it with that beam null. And you can see that everything lines up nice and cleanly. Now for whatever reason, sometimes they don't align. And the thing to be wary of, if we look in the first instance generator and we go to the options, this random seed, make a note of that, that random seed needs to be identical to this random seed in order for them to marry up. Copying and pasting into like we've just done should help with that. But if you create a brand new instance generator, that random seed will be different, which is very handy, but not for what we need here. So let's give them a little bit of wiggle. Actually, I might turn it to, here we go, wireframe so it's a little clearer because they're only two point polys. Actually, we'll do something with nodes here. Let's start by flashing them on and off. Let's just go for a turbulence. Perhaps we'll plug it into the weight. There we go, some are on, some are off, and then we shall animate. Let's just animate the uh, position quickly. So that's pretty good. What would happen if we just took the bump into the offset? Let's have a look. So uh, let's turn that to uniform. Well, I certainly added a bit of wiggle, perhaps it's too much. So we'll keep it within there. Okay. And then what we can also do is we can go back to the source ray gun. Now what I've got here already prepared is a nodal displacement. So that's just a bit of turbulence, giving a bit of displacement. And I've also got a gradient which tapers off the closer it is to its zero point. So there's no distortion there and it's a little bit more the further away it gets. But this leads me nicely to a point about displacements and instance and time offsetting. In that, you can't do it. But I may have a solution which we'll find out in part two. So hopefully, I will see you soon. <laughs>